This is the catalyst femtosecond laser unit for cataract surgery. And uh, this is one of uh, four machines that's currently approved in the United States for femtosecond laser cataract surgery. Some of the features of the catalyst that I like are a few things. One is the beautiful user interface, which we're gonna go into in a minute. And number two are the actual patient interface, which uses a liquid optics interface that looks something like this. It's very, very gentle to place on the eye, very comfortable for the patient. And it uses balanced solid solution. Once we have a light suction on the eye, we apply water and the water acts as a lens to connect the eye essentially to the laser and to allow for a very painless and comfortable delivery of the femtosecond laser energy in a safe manner. Uh, the pressure rise is very minimal with this, and like I said, it's comfortable. We do operate on patients of all ages, so we wanna minimize any, any trauma or any high IOT. The challenge we have with all these interfaces is that the softer it is and the more gentle it is, the more chance there is for micro movements to occur. And so we have to be wary of that, and sometimes that does occur with this where micro movements of the eye can occur, and that's why the Femtosecond manufacturers have moved to faster capsulotomies, faster treatment times, so these small movements will make less of an issue, less of an impact on the surgery. Uh, the way to mitigate that, you know, some systems crank up the IOP and it can hold on very tight, but again, that has downsides as far as imaging and patient comfort and perhaps safety. So I think Catalyst is found in a sweet spot, and uh, as long as we keep that in mind and be surgeons, we can mitigate the micro movements that patients have. The user interface is really, really nice and simple. Everything is done on a large touch screen, which we're all accustomed to now living in the iPad generation. And what we do is we program the four different cuts that the laser can provide. And that includes the capsulotomy, the fragmentation of the lens, arcuate incisions, and then corneal entry incisions. And you can choose if you wanna do all four, all three, how many you'd like, and here we have all four. And as we go through them, there are default templates that I've already, for example, made one. So it's very easy to put my 5.3 millimeter default and you can choose the centration method. Uh, I use what's called the scanned capsule using the OCT imaging to help me center the capsulotomy on the lens. This is a feature that can only be done on the laser and not manually. Manually, we're just using the pupil, which may not be a good guide for the capsulotomy. As we move forward, the surgeon has a, a very wide array of choices of how to fragment the lens. We can do a segmentation as well as a softening as I do here for dense lenses. And what I've done is I have a whole number of defaults. You can see for my, what I call four plus NS, but that's your averagely dense lens. It does a segmentation and a very, very narrow segment, segmentation, uh, fragmentation. For the very, very advanced lenses, we go even tighter. And then I have settings such as large frag, which is just for soft lenses that don't need to be broken up into small pieces and don't need a segmentation. Usually I'll use a super capsular technique for these soft lenses, which are made softer. Arcuate incisions also are very, very accurate with the femtosecond laser, way more than we can apply by hand. Uh, and here we can program both the axis, the optical zone, and the length. We can simply change the axis by changing the number. And everything moves and of course we can do single, or double or even eccentric astigmatic keratotomies. Usually these are on the limbus. And um, easy to program. And finally, you can program your incisions as well as your side port incisions. Let's go back here and make this 90 degrees. All these have been preset and you can see I just choose my temporal coaxial and it just goes right into that uh, preset mode. Once we go to the last screen, this is the confirmation screen. I see that I have a little overlap here and that's the beauty of going in and maybe in this case, I wanna change this to 270, let's say, and just have one over there. And now I won't have any intersecting arcuates with my side port incision. Alternatively, I can just turn off the side port, make a symmetrical one, and do a manual one later, which I typically would do in this case. Beautiful user interface that presents the surgeon everything we need to do the surgery here. We can confirm, we perform a surgical timeout, and once that's done, everything's approved, and we move on to the patient. The patient is made comfortable on this moving bed, and once the patient's head is located here, we use different uh, pillows and cushions, and we can stabilize the head to make it steady, and that's done while we're programming it. 
the bed is then brought underneath the laser. We can unlock it here. And once here, this is where the steps of placing the liquid optics interface in the patient, watching it on the screen, and using three simple buttons, the vacuum, capture, and lock, to confirm that the patient's eye is now in line with the laser, and then we proceed with the steps. And there you have it, the catalyst femtosecond laser system.